Hi, I'm Alan Malmerstein. I'm a professor of ophthalmology at the Mayo Clinic. And I'm Jose Polito, professor in the departments of ophthalmology and molecular medicine at the Mayo Clinic. And today we're going to discuss the importance of genetic testing in diagnosing uh, macular degeneration with some emphasis on vitelliform dystrophies and best disease. And the reason we think this is important is because just looking at the fundus, the back of the eye, and doing electrical testing, including electrooculography, is insufficient nowadays to make the diagnosis. And we are showing three cases here. They've been variably called adult onset foveomacular dystrophy. They've been called macular degeneration. They've been called best disease. And only by doing genetic testing, that we, which we can do nowadays, in a very quick and very almost inexpensive way in comparison to the uh, to uh, older days, we can make these diagnoses. The importance is that now we're at the threshold of treatments, and Dr. Marmerstein is going to explain to you some new and exciting treatments that we have might have in the future, and some uh, some important early studies that are ongoing right now at the Mayo Clinic. So here's the first case Dr. Polito was referring to. Uh, this is a case where there are several different possibilities. Obviously, adult vitelliform dystrophy and best disease would be considered for the differential diagnosis there. In this case, genetic testing ruled out best disease. Now, vitelliform dystrophies like this, we know from our own research in the Rochester Epidemiology Project, occur in about 1 in 5,500 patients, at least in Olmsted County, Minnesota, which is probably representative of the United States as a whole. Our next case here is a little bit different, though. Uh, this is an example where we had a patient who came in and um, I, I don't know if you would like to comment on some of the possible diagnoses for this. Uh, Dr. Marmerstein, thank you. So this has been thought to be possibly best disease, macular degeneration, and really the genetic testing was what made the diagnosis, Dr. Marmerstein? Right. In this instance, um, the patient was found to have a mutation in the gene BEST1. That mutation, A243V, has been found in patients who have both adult vitelliform dystrophy as well as best vitelliform macular dystrophy. And in this particular instance, even without electrophysiologic testing then, we can assign this patient to the category of best vitelliform dystrophy. Which totally changes what, how we've been able to diagnose these patients nowadays. Indeed. This third case was originally presented in, a, in the clinic as macular degeneration, as I understand mm -hmm. it. And following genetic testing, the patient was found to have a mutation as well in the gene BEST1. And in this particular case, it's an amino acid that has previously been shown to cause BEST disease. And so this patient's diagnosis went from macular degeneration to BEST vitelliform macular dystrophy. Now, what are the implications of this within your practice? The implications are now important because we are at the threshold of being able to make changes in how we, the, the lives of these patients. In consideration of these three cases, if you had done electrooculogram testing on these patients uh, combined with electroretinogram testing, you would have had a similar ability to diagnose. Our first patient with AVMD would presumably have had a normal EOG and ERG. The second patient who actually had what would be AVMD due to a BEST1 mutation would have had a normal EOG and a normal ERG. And the third patient who had BEST disease, if you had thought from the fundus photo that was BEST disease and ordered the EOG and ERG, would have had an abnormal EOG or a ratio under 1.55 and a normal ERG. But instead of undergoing that testing, which is somewhat uncomfortable for the patient because they have to have the electrodes placed on their temples for the EOG and, and their, their bridge of the nose and, and the, the contact lens electrodes for the ERG, if they get genetic testing, um, this involves, in the worst case scenario, a blood draw. And in many cases today, it can be done simply using a mouthwash. Um, and it can be done at home if the patient desires. So um, it strikes me that we could replace the electrophysiologic testing using genetic testing. Would you agree with that? I agree. And interestingly enough, uh, many of these companies that now can do the genetic testing will actually um, call their insurance companies of the patients 
to determine whether insurance will pay, and many times insurance companies will pay for this. So in most cases, then, your patients are finding that their out-of-pocket expense is actually pretty limited. Mm -hmm. In the last couple of years, our laboratory at the Mayo Clinic has begun a clinical trial. It's listed on clinicaltrials.gov, and the information for this trial is, is shown on the slide that you're looking at. Uh, what we're doing is we're collecting uh, DNA as well as skin fibroblasts from patients who have Best disease uh, or any of the other um, forms of Best trophenopathy, and, the, and there are five. The most common, of course, is Best disease. We're also taking adult vitelliform dystrophy patients, patients with the recessive forms of Best disease or including autosomal recessive Best trophenopathy, and then patients who have peripheral retinal disorders due to mutations in Best one, and those are autosomal dominant vitreoretinal choroidopathy as well well as the very rare cases of retinitis pigmentosa. With these skin fibroblasts, we're reprogramming them into induced pluripotent stem cells, which we can then differentiate into retinal pigment epithelial cells. That's the cell where bestrophin, the product of the best one gene, is expressed, and that's where the, the pathogenic problem that results in these diseases occurs. Now, this allows us to do a number of things. From a therapeutic perspective, there are already phase one clinical trials using IPS-derived retinal pigment epithelial cells for the treatment of macular degeneration going on in several countries, uh, Japan, and there should be one going on in the United States shortly. Um, but the bigger issue here is that it allows us to consider the same process to therapeutically treat best disease, potentially adult vitelliform macular dystrophy, autosomal recessive best trophenopathy, and we can generate models of these diseases in the laboratory. Those models allow us to understand the processes that have gone awry to cause the disease, and they allow us to test potential therapeutic compounds to determine whether they actually have effect on these specific patients. There are over 200 different mutations that cause these diseases in the best one gene, and so having the widest array of stem cells that we can representing the widest number of mutations is critical because some mutations, uh, some patients may respond differently dependent on their mutation to different drugs that we test in the laboratory that we hope to bring to the clinic in the not terribly distant future. So on that note, if you ha the criteria for enrollment in our trial happens to, to be that you have genetically tested, genetically confirmed best disease or a best trophenopathy. And that means that you have to have had that genetic testing done. And your patients have to have that genetic testing done in order to enroll in our trial and probably any other trial that's gonna come down the road using these therapies. And those, those trials are not far off. It's a brave new world. And I suspect that in the not too distant future, we will be using these cells that are already growing in Dr. Marmerstein's labs to help our patients with these forms of diseases, specifically starting with best disease, but also going further than that. Once again, I'm Alan Marmerstein from the Department of Ophthalmology at the Mayo Clinic, and we've been discussing the use of genetic testing and diagnosis of best disease with teleform dystrophies and macular degeneration. And I'm Jose Polito from the Department of Ophthalmology, also at Mayo Clinic. Thank you for watching.